Hey, it's Mark Bergen from WRAL. This weekend at the Raleigh Convention Center, Galaxy Con is back. There are a ton of guests, including Star Trek's very own William Shatner. He played Captain Kirk back in the Star Trek original series in the 1960s. I had the chance to catch up with Shatner about his activities this weekend. He will be at the Raleigh Convention Center on Sunday. Here's what our conversation sounded like. I wanted to ask you, I know you've been asked a lot about this in interviews. What's the best way for me to ask you about your trip to space in 2021 with Blue Origin? What's the best? In Latin. I I understand Latin very well. Ask me in Latin. (laughs) Um, This trip to space that I took opened, I've been an ecologist for a long time and concerned about uh, the deteriorating earth and, you know, where my kids fit into this, my grandkids. But being up there and seeing the insignificance of the Earth and uh, and and therefore our insignificance uh, on this little tiny rock, uh, it, it, it dramatized very clearly what we all need to be not only concerned but obsessed with uh, the deteriorating condition of the Earth. And, you know, I don't know what we can do at this point, but a Manhattan Project to save the planet is is required. Very good. Um, with your role, Captain Kirk, Star Trek, the original series, all the way back in the 1960s, you'll be in Raleigh this upcoming weekend at Galaxy Con. I will, and I'll be looking forward to it. And I hope your audience will look forward to it, too. I'll be there all day Sunday. Very good. Did you ever think you'd still be going to conventions you know, 50 plus years later from when you were originally recording the series back in the 1960s? Uh, no, of course not. Any more than you know that uh, you are going to be head of the uh, uh, the news department next year. And how have these conventions changed over the years from when you first started? Well, when I first started, the first convention I went to had 15,000 people in it. Uh, so... In a way, there won't be that many people at Raleigh. On the other hand, the San Diego uh, Comic Con had a hundred has today had uh, one hundred and fifty thousand people. So you can see how the numbers vary, and and it be, has become an important position, if you will, for movies starting out and people wanting to make sure the audience knew what they were doing. Do you see some of the same people, I would imagine, from year to year when you go to these different conventions throughout the country? I imagine imagine if you ask somebody else, they would say, yeah, we're always seeing Shatner there. But I go to several because I'm doing a lot of stuff, books and albums and NFTs and and even a watch. Uh, So I'm busy uh, as part of my job doing it as well as uh, making sure people know about it. I want to keep things in the 1960s. Personally, I'm a huge fan of The Twilight Zone. You were in two episodes of The Twilight mm-hmm. Zone. What's the best story you can share from your experience on that legendary series? I suppose my meeting the guy on the wing, who turns out to be a, a, a Czechoslovakian uh, acrobat. Uh, I was going to say apricot because his costume was fuzzy. It was... and antithetical to uh, anything streamlined. So him on the wing of a 707 uh, seemed comical at the time and continues to seem comical, except that in storytelling, if you've got a good story, anything is possible. Absolutely. And that's one of the most legendary episodes too. I know Rod Serling was behind that, the co-creator, but Nightmare from 20,000 Feet is... For any of the listeners and our viewers who haven't seen that, go check that out. It's one of the most famous episodes of The Twilight Zone. And that was, you know, when you were first starting out in the industry, too. Yeah. Um, You've acted for seven decades now. What motivates you to keep going? Well, I've heard uh, the chief among them was Marlon Brando saying that it's child's play, acting is child's play. I see it as an exploration of psychology. I think that, uh, you know, you as an interviewer, uh, listening to what the people say and the way they say it, the nuances of hello tells you a great deal about 
about uh, how they are and what they're doing. Uh, and so that nuance is what I try to invest the people I play uh, and it's a continuous exploration. I find it fascinating. I find acting and, and everything fascinating. Absolutely. So what's next for you? Because literally, I know last year you were in outer space. I was going through your IMDb. You've been on movies, TV shows. What's next for William Shatner? Well, I got a book coming out called Boldly Go in October. I've got a watch that I've designed with the Webb Telescope and NASA uh, coming out. I've got uh, uh, The Unexplained, which is a big hit on on uh, the, the channel on A&E and and uh, and actually it's it trended third on netflix so it's become very popular the unexplained um i'm going to do a, a really weird nft which will involve a doll of me and a design an electronic design that you, when you bought the the figure you buy the nft and the whole thing is you have something practical and something electronic. I've never heard of that before. And I'm very excited about it. Um, uh, Orangecomet.com. Uh, uh, be interesting to see. When you got presented with that idea, did you know what an NFT was? Walk me through that process. Well, I will. Uh, uh, it, it starts with blockchain and it starts with uh, the, the whole electronic thing. In fact, I'm a... I'm a member of a company that was using uh, solar power to power a building that housed the uh, blockchain group because <clears throat> the complaint was, and this building is in coal country, the complaint was it uses a lot of electricity, which is burning coal, which is bad. So this was using solar power to, to, to power. So I was involved fairly early and the whole blockchain idea. And I even went to Mexico with a friend who really knows what he's talking about to look at all that. So I dimly understand it, but the NFT is uh, uh, almost inexplicable. It's an electronic image, which is unique to you. It has uh, uh, that uniqueness. It'll only be 2,500 of the ones I'm doing. And after that, there's no more. You will have in your uh, uh, phone wallet, uh, an image that is entirely yours and an object of mine that is unique to you. And, uh, and it's, it's just a, a unique gift that you pay for uh, from me to you. Very cool. And so I guess, is it raising money? Like I, I personally, forgive my ignorance, I don't exactly know how NFTs work. You raise money and you auction these off. How does that work? Well, this isn't going to be an auction. Yes, there are auctions and people bid on them, and I guess electronically. This is a set price uh, in which you will buy the doll and alongside this unique 2,500 uh, 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 2, of them will be, if I could use the word unique to itself, uh, there'll only be that number. And along with that will be this electronic image that will be accompanying this figure uh, the concept a little bit uh difficult to take right away but it is a unique element that has um, my imprimatur on it i don't want to take up too much more of your time mr shatner i All do right, have one I, final I'm, question i'm for delighted you talking to you and, and and making sure your audience will come on sunday to visit with me absolutely absolutely uh i do want to ask you this too so at the end of the uh, Boston Legal, at the end of each episode, famously, you would sit on the balcony with James Spader, be drinking whiskey. I want to know, I'm just curious, were you actually drinking whiskey, actual whiskey, while you're acting out those scenes at the end of Boston Legal? If you're blue and you don't know where to go to, why don't you go where fashion sits, putting on the Ritz? Now, I, I had to learn to do that, okay? If I had a drink... I wouldn't be able to say that if you're blue and you don't know what to, okay? That requires such precision that being befuddled in any way by drink. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're on the balcony for a full day of shooting and you're drinking a single malt all that time, you'd be on the floor. So it was cold tea, and I hope that doesn't come as a cold shock to you. <laughs>
<laughs> William Shatner will be at GalaxyCon this weekend in Raleigh. And thank you so much for your time this afternoon and taking yeah, time for us. Me. And I know our listeners and viewers are going to be really excited to see you, you at the convention center. I'm excited to see them and hopefully you as well. Bye-bye.